Hopefully we get some traffic on the way to work. That'd be nice. Because uh, it's kind of boring talking when there's nothing, no action in front of me. At least it's boring for you guys. I mean, it's boring for me too. Just to kind of cruise around on highways at highway speeds. But if there's a bit of traffic, you know, there's a bit of action for me, for you. Um, just overall, it just makes the riding a bit more enjoyable. You know, I was listening to the... Um, uh, was it the High Side, Low Side podcast? Which, um... You know, they were talking about... I think they were talking about motorcycle myths. So, like, season four, one of the last episodes or something. Uh, let's turn the music down. And, you know, they kind of revealed the kind of riders they are. They're just more of a... You know, Zach and Spurgeon. I don't know what the fuck. And then the old guy, I forget his name, Lee. There's always an old guy named Lee in every podcast. I don't understand it. But, um... Um, yeah, they just kind of revealed, like, the kind of riders they were, and just their, uh, they were debunking, um, motorcycle myths, and they kind of touched on the, the topic of lane splitting, and, you know, Zach claims to be, you know, living in LA, so he enjoys lane splitting very much, and, you know, they made some good points, for example, you know, he made a trip from, I don't know, somewhere from downtown to Barstow, in, like, you know, Google Maps told him it'd be he'd be there in five hours, but you know, because of lane splitting, I cut it down to three hours. So you know, that's almost half of his commute time, uh, just gone because of lane splitting. Which yes, if you do it, if you are a good lane splitter, you can cut down lane splitting that. You know, you can cut down your commute time that drastically. But when you're starting out, you're only going to be cutting down like maybe 10% of 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 your commute time because you're going to be slow. You're going to be moving like this in traffic look you know they said five to ten miles an hour faster than traffic which is this what i'm doing right now everyone's doing about 15 actually let me let me reference let me reference this 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 white car 22 miles an hour so this is what they would be doing 32 34 miles an hour this is very slow this is humiliating and you're not gonna you're not gonna get by that fast or you're not gonna cut down your commute times all that fast if you're doing that speed um, as opposed to, you know, this, which is actually pretty fast for, especially if you're starting out. And even if you're, uh, used to riding or lane splitting, this is kind of fast. But you learn to recognize the certain dangers when it comes to lane splitting. And, um, I don't know, I just didn't really agree with, uh, what they were saying about certain... Not really agree, just, uh, you know, they kind of reveal the kind of riders they are. Um, you know, they kind of sit on their high horse and be like, well, you can be riding for you know, 20 years be doing 100,000 miles, but you're still going to be shit compared to some guy like us, like, because we ride 20 motorcycles a year or something. And it's like, uh, I don't know, dude. And then they kind of made the argument that, uh, you know, that you should always have ABS, which, I mean, I've never had ABS on any of my bikes. Either that's because I'm very fortunate and I've just been, you know, magooing my way through my motorcycle career, just avoiding all these fatal accidents that would require me to use ABS. Or, you know, I just learned, or what my point would be about ABS is just ride within your limits. Understand that, uh, you know, if you're constantly practicing emergency braking, because they say that you would never be prepared when it comes to when when it comes to using your brakes full power for whatever situation arises where you need it, you're never going to be prepared. Which is no, that's bullshit. That just means you didn't prepare. You didn't you prior to the crash, weeks prior to the crash, you weren't practicing this. You weren't practicing. You weren't practicing. You weren't practicing emergency braking. You know, if you're never practicing it and you're just record, you, and you're just uh, and you're just uh, letting the a bike's ABS system take over every single time, you're never going to be prepared for these panic braking situations. First of all, you should never be panic braking uh, to begin with. But again, that goes to my original point. Never ride beyond your limits out here on the streets. Of course, on the, on a racetrack, that might be different. You you'd be willing to push some boundaries, but out here. Don't be doing, you know, uh, don't be going at speeds where you can't react or don't be riding at speeds where you can't react to the cars around you, whether they're coming towards you, uh, away from you or whatever. Always be riding at a, at a speed where you, you you can recognize that, yes, I can react to any car that's going to do anything stupid. Like if this black Civic is going to do something stupid, I'm not going to be doing 100 miles an hour next to it 
because I wouldn't have the reaction time to, you know, protect myself from whatever is going to happen. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, that's just, you know, like right there, yes, I'm riding fast, but there was no cars that were going to put me in danger right there, even though I'm surrounded by cars right now. But again, this comes down to experience. Nope. Ah, oh, shut the fuck up. Um, I'm not sure you can hear it, but that Civic was just full sending in. I was like, dude, come on. I'm like, it's a Civic. But, yes, you, you learn, you, I don't know, dude, just, if you're practicing all these things like they say, you know, you're never going to be a good rider like us because you never, you know, you, you don't meet the certain criteria that we do. It's like, no, fuck you, dude. Like, it's, you, you learn to become a good rider by always just practicing, you know. Um, practicing meeting new people, you know, riding with new people, seeing different riding styles, seeing what works with their riding style, with you know, certain aspects you want to adopt from their riding styles. For example, I thought it was hot shit until I started riding with some dude that's been riding for 12 years, you know, almost exclusively R6s. Uh, you know, well, I mean, you know, when he was a kid, he used to ride dirt bikes, but you know, I didn't realize how hard he can, you know, hit canyon corners and stuff until I started riding with this guy and I was like, whoa, shit, like, you know, this guy rides like a dumbass, which, you know, we all do, especially in group rides, but like, I was just, you know, he showed me an aspect of motorcycling or street riding that I thought, you know, a level of riding I thought was never possible. Uh, and all I had to do was just ride with him for a bit, you know, uh, a few a few days or just a couple, you know, days, and I was like, whoa, like, that's fucking crazy. I learned that, you know, there's an aspect of motorcycle riding that I wasn't practicing, which was, you know, canyon riding, or just, like, hard, you know, leaning over and stuff, and since then, I've been practicing becoming a better rider, and, um, sure, I still think I don't, I'm not shit, and this is after four to five years of motorcycle riding, but compared to most motorcycle riders, I'm always passing them, whether it's, you know, canyons, um, here in the streets, lane splitting, you know, it does not matter. And I don't attribute it to my bike. I just attribute it to skill. And, you know, it, never am I, do I feel uncomfortable, you know, passing these people because I'm always practicing. I'm always practicing. You know, I know my limits. This, the moment I, you know, I, I recognize I'm at my limits, I back the fuck off. And, you know, and I let someone who is above my skill level take over. If, you know, if they're following me or whatever. <clears throat> I don't know, I mean, I should have better prepared for this, this rant, but again, just listening to that podcast, which again, I, I, I mean, during my job, my, when I'm working, I get three hours where I don't do anything, so I just play, you know, music, podcast, just something to, to occupy my mind as I do it on my sketchbook, because again, I get paid for three hours to just sit around and do nothing, essentially just in case they need me like I'm a cover person during those three hours so again I just listened to the podcast I was like yeah that, you know they let's see what kind of myths they're gonna debunk like all these bullshit ones that everyone knows are bullshit like you know loud pipes say lives which they say was bullshit and I'm like yeah that mm, yes and no like one one point that they brought out you know and of course you know they're they're motorcycle journalists they're not physicists or anything they never studied physics I think but they say because of this article written that uh, in France or Canada, I forget what the fuck where, because the exhaust is facing backwards, sound is traveling backwards, which is like, no, dude, like, sound travels spherically. It doesn't matter what speed you're traveling, it's always going to be traveling in all directions uh, at the same speed. Of course, you have this phenomenon called the Doppler effect, where you have new sound waves coming from this source, which would be the exhaust tip, um, meeting up with old, old, um, sound waves, and then, you know, it changes the pitch of things, and, and you can tell, you know, how fast someone's moving if you know the, if you know the, the frequency at which, you know, the, the, uh, the, the sound is, um, uh, whatever, what, I mean, but still, like, their, their, their basis for loud pipes don't, don't, or don't say lives is, that sound travels backwards. Um, sound travels backwards 
on a motorcycle because the exhaust is facing backwards, which no, it does not. <laughs> That's fucking false. Um, it faces, I mean, it faces all directions, left, right, forward, back, equally. Again, the reason why it sounds different in the front is because of the Doppler effect. That's simple fucking physics if you, you know, open up a physics book about sound waves. But, uh, personally, I, I, I'm on the fence with Loud Pipe Saves Lives. I, I kind of agree with the point that if you're relying on your exhaust to save your ass when you're lane splitting, especially, then, yeah, you've already lost. You've already, like, kind of forfeited your, your, your rights to, like, fucking, uh, save, I don't know, dude, like, it just, you don't rely on your exhaust sound to, to save life. It's only, you know, it's only an added, an additional thing to help you out, to be more visible, you know, visible with the ears, audible, you know, but w visibility here is key. That's why you get a lot of dorks out here that wear high-vis jackets and high-vis gear and stuff, because it makes them more visible. It doesn't mean that it's going to protect them from a crash 100% of the time, but it might, it might help. It, you know, the, the, the key word here is it might uh, you're not relying on your gear, to, again, to make you visible or anything. Like they said in the podcast, you know, you ride out here like you're invisible all the time. Um, if you're wearing gear that makes you more visible, that's cool. That helps. But you shouldn't assume that everyone can see you now just because you have a loud pipe or that you're wearing a visible, or, you know, bright gear, or, you know, loud gear. Um, but again, I mean, that's one of those, I guess, misconceptions about sound that all of a sudden, because the exhaust is facing backwards, you know, sound only travels in that direction, which no, it does not. And, and unless you're, unless you're traveling at supersonic speeds, which no motorcycle is capable of, um, you're never going to outrun the sound of your exhaust. You know, uh, sound moves at the speed of, on average, like 220 miles an hour or something. There's no fucking motorcycle or motorcyclist in the right mind out here in the streets that's going to be doing those speeds or something. I, again, I forget exactly the this, this speed of sound, but it, it changes uh, due to air density and, and the temperature. Um, what else? What, what other shit did I disagree with these guys or agree? Um... Yeah, I mean, those are just the two things I was kind of not really upset about, but I was like, uh, like, come on, you guys, like, you guys are journalists, at least do a bit more research as opposed to just, you know, relying on these articles, which aren't even, like, legit, or, you know, I don't know, dude, it's, it's, it's just one of those rants I need to get out there that, oh, shit, and we're doing 55. So, uh, police car, not that he's gonna catch up, but still, I don't wanna... I'm already in hot water with my job for my speeding ticket, my riding history. They asked me straight up, like, dude, were you, were you, uh, were you street racing when you got the stick? I'm like, no, dude, I don't do that shit. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I don't really street race out here. I'm, I'm, again, solo rider. I don't fuck with cars out here. Every now and then I might just fuck with the car because I know, you know, they, they don't know that bikes are faster in general. But it's just changing because of the way emissions are going. Uh, man manufacturers are are prioritizing torque over horsepower now. Uh, just again for the sake of, of emissions because of how tight things are getting. So cars now are kind of becoming faster than motorcycles as opposed to the other way around in the early 2000s. Up, you know. Oh, we passed the motorcycles. Didn't even see them. But again, he was wearing a loud helmet, so like, why I couldn't see him, I don't know. Whoa. Almost got sucked into the tires. Oh yeah, and they say, why don't you just have your horn on all the time? No, that's fucking stupid. Uh, again, because... A horn is actually pretty fucking loud. It's louder than your exhaust sometimes. Imagine just having that on all the time. I'm not going to do it, just sit, you know, I don't want to annoy these people here. Or look like a jackass. But, um, you know, hearing your engine and, and just knowing what's going on with the transmission and stuff, just being able to hear those audio cues is very important when it comes to riding. You can even hear your tires if you wear, you know, high-fidelity high fidelity earplugs. 
Um, and just knowing the condition of your bike all the time is very helpful. And just having the horn on all the fucking time, you're drowning out a lot of these essential uh, sounds that you want to hear. Um, so no, that's a that's a stupid fucking idea. It's not because you know you look like a dumbass with your horn on all the time. It's it's because you're now you're you're inhibiting your capacity to to uh, to hear the uh, you know certain certain elements of the road or even just cars around you. Um, <clears throat> again, if you wear high fidelity earplugs or just hearing protection in general, you can hear cars creeping up on you. Even if they don't have exhaust or anything, quiet cars, you hear their tires slapping onto the pavement. Uh, and that's a huge, like, again, those are like eyes behind your head, pretty much. Being able to hear those, those, those road noises. But, I mean, that's my rant. I think that's it for today because, again, I'm getting closer to my job and I don't want to reveal exactly where I work, even though <laughs> I'm sure in, in, in future, in videos to come in the future, you're going to start to see, like, oh, yeah, like, <laughs> this guy works for this school. It's just a matter of figuring out which department, you know, and who I am exactly, which is not hard at all to, to figure out. <laughs>